Okay, here we're going to look at hydroponic substrates. While most people think hydroponics is growing purely in water, there is the option to run some substrates. These substrates uh, qualify under hydroponics because they're not adding any mineral content to the plant. They're purely adding an area uh, for root support and growth in. Now these substrates, they allow for a wide margin, a wider margin of error for the plants compared to if we were growing in just pure water solution. They hold nutrients in water in case of pump failure, so that can buffer you in case you're looking at, you know, monitoring the pump and then the pump fails. It gives a little bit of that window of opportunity to realize that before you lose the entire crop. They also provide physical structure for the roots. They also in part insul insulate the plant roots from large swings in temperature uh, versus just a water-based system. Now there's water holding capacity, is the amount of nutrient solution that can be absorbed. So how absorbent is the media uh, or substrate that you're using here? Cocoa coir and rock wool, rock wool can hold five to eight times their weight in water, which means less irrigation events are needed. In contrast, expanded clay pebbles hold very little water, resulting in the need for almost continuous irrigation uh, with those. So again, it's important to know what substrate or what media you're using and how uh, absorbent it is for materials, because that's just going to depend on the irrigation events that you choose to use. Air-filled porosity, so the amount of airspace in the media. It is important since roots need to breathe or respire um, to be able to exchange oxygen. If making your own mix using perlite uh, can help increase the amount of air in the root zone in the overall drainage. And we could see that evident here with a high porosity mix, a lot of area for that air pockets to fit in, a lot of opportunity for your roots to have access to oxygen. Now CEC, or cation exchange capacity, how well the substrate can hold onto and release positive ions at the plant roots. Low CEC is poor ability to hold nutrients, for example, rock wool. This doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad uh, substrate, it just means we have to be aware of that when we're making our plan. Cocoa acquires a very high CEC and can hold on to key nutrients uh, so strongly that the plant cannot have access to them. This is why if you're growing in a cocoa acquire solution, um, or media, I should say, typically a calcium and magnesium based nutrient mix is recommended on regular intervals uh, for those growers in that situation. That cocoa coir is derived from the husks of coconuts. It can hold calcium and make it unavailable to the plants. And this is why a CalMag solution is typically recommended. You want to make sure that you're um, rinsing and removing any unwanted salts from the original material if they are not done so when at the time of purchase. It can be a variable product from batch to batch, so keep this in mind that just because you have a good batch, don't expect that necessarily that same quantity each in every batch. You should always be testing those and making sure that everything is falling within the parameters that you need. However, it does hold moisture very well, so that is one great positive uh, to it. But also keep in mind of the source material and sustainability of that. Now with expanded clay pebbles, they are a replacement for soil. They're easy to use and they are reusable. Though you want to make sure you always rinse them um, before you use them because there will be a fine kind of clay dust that will uh, wash away. If you don't do that ahead of time, it could clog your pumps or cause other residue and other issues. You also want to make sure you take the time to get them properly saturated when first using. These do have a very high CEC and can basically not be over irrigated. As a result, many people run irrigation over them 24 hours a day. It should be at least four inches deep to prevent light penetration, which can negatively impact root growth. If you're too shallow and roots try to grow and they see light, well, you'll stunt the roots. Having that four inches or so barrier prevents light from penetrating and allowing the roots to expand normally. They can gain about 15% more weight after they soak. Rock will convey like 100, um, sorry, 1,000 and 1,100% um, or so greater uh, than their weight. So if you're transitioning from a rock wool to a clay pebbles or clay pebbles to rock wool, Keep in mind there can be a vast different, 1100% um, greater more water retention with rock wool versus only 15% with clay pebbles. Again, doesn't mean this is necessarily a bad media to choose, just be mindful of its natural characteristics. That rock wool is a commercial grower favorite. You need to pre-soak the cubes if you do use them, about 5 to 15 minutes depending on their size, longer time for larger cubes. I'm make sure you shake the cubes before um, inserting them into a tray or whatever holding device that you're using, you don't want to squeeze them. If you squeeze them, you're kind of crushing all the air out. Very quick and easy for transplanting. That's why the uh, commercial grower's favorite. And they have a great ability to hold water and also air to allow those roots to breathe. Sand provides good plant support. Uh, it should be sterilized before you use it, but it can be very heavy. Also, it doesn't hold water very well due to its large particle size. 
and it can also make the transplant process difficult. What happens is when you go to pull a plant out, if you're using sand, uh, it can disturb many of the fine roots and cause increased stress for your next step down um, on the growing scale of the season. So all of these have pros and cons with them. You want to choose one that fits your size or your uh, production uh, well. And this is why there's so many options out there and available to you. So take a look at them. Hopefully this was helpful in allowing you to, ch to understand hydroponic substrates and realize hydroponics is more than just growing in pure water-based solutions.